Hello, welcome. I'm Sean Kent Hayashi. Today we are talking about all things puppy, setting your puppy up for success. Please write in the chat where you're from. I'd love to, to know. I'm going to take a second here and get mine set up so that I can see the chat box as we go along. Let's see. It's taking a moment here. Hopefully you can see this and we are live talking about all things puppy, setting your puppy up for success. I am Sean Kent Hayashi with Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Toy Schnauzers. There are three things that I'm hoping we will do together today in this live event. The first is that I intend to respond to the questions that some of you asked in advance. In other words, when I sent out the invitation, the community announcement about this event, I asked that any of you who had questions, uh, please go ahead and pose them so that I could come prepared today to talk to, respond to your questions. The second thing that I intend to do today is discuss how to be the pack leader and how to set up a relationship with your puppy that is based on trust and respect so that your puppy knows you've got his back and that you are the pack leader. When that happens, your puppy doesn't feel like he has to be the pack leader then, which is a really good thing. So the third thing I would like us to do today is I will respond to the questions in the comments area. So if you have questions that you would like to pose today during our live event, please indicate that by putting three question marks before your question. That way, when I go to look at the chat box area, I will be able to see which uh, points or comments are actually questions that you're wanting me to respond to. So if someone would say hello in the chat box. Ah, there we go. I see Jake Walker. Hello, Jake. Happy Saturday to you. Please write in the chat box where you're from, any information you would like to share with me or with those watching along today. We'll start off with the questions that were asked in advance of our session. So one of the first questions that was asked of me by Dana, I think it's Dana, is what color is toffee? So I have Toffee sitting here in my lap right now so that you can see Toffee's color. So we would definitely say that Toffee's ears are red. And we would say that when we're looking at the genetic DNA on Toffee, we would say that he is recessive red. In other words, he doesn't have any dark hairs anywhere on his body. That's what makes a dog recessive red. Now within the recessive red um, uh, spectrum of color, we have everything from this white creamy color. So white would be on one end of the recessive red. So yeah, this is honeybee. And honeybee would be a champagne beige color. So you can see the big difference between toffee, this, these red colors in him, and these champagne colors in honeybee. So I don't think that in the schnauzer breed there is a, a, a scale, if you will. 
there are some breeders who have teased out what they call the different color range from white to dark red, but I have not seen a unified, agreed upon color standard. So what color do I call him? Adorable. <laughs> I have shown him since he was born, and he was much redder when he was first born. His color uh, continues to change and evolve, so we're going to have to see where Mr. Toffee lands. But thank you, Dana, for that question. Another question came from Organic Gal. An Organic Gal was asking about natural ears versus cropped ears in puppies. And I would say that, um, it's a personal choice, so you can decide if you like or want your puppy to have cropped ears, you may do that. I personally don't know anyone in my area who does ear cropping and none of my dogs have cropped ears. I like that floppy ear look and so that's what we have for all of our dogs. I just think it's adorable, cute, the floppy ear look. All right, next question was related to the docked tail. And uh, so a docked tail is when a puppy at about two, three days old, I go to the veterinarian and I have my vet dock the tail. Uh, they use a little bit of a local anesthetic. The puppy doesn't get upset or cry. The puppies are fine. They also remove the dew claws. Dew claws are a little claw that's right in here on the side of the leg. And I have those removed as well. So docking tails versus leaving the tail long, it's totally a personal preference in the United States. However, there are lots of places in the world where for some breeds it is not uh, a preference and it is illegal. So if you for some reason do not want your puppy's tail docked, let your breeder know in advance and I'm sure they would be happy to not have the tail docked. Let's see, caring for a white coat. I've gotten several questions about this. How do I keep her beard so white and clean? How do I keep Birdie's beard so white and clean? Frankly, I don't have to do much. My dogs clean each other and they are regularly taking care of, attending to, grooming each other. Grace loves to groom everyone. So they clean up after each other. And I will also say that my dogs, my white dogs in particular, aren't going out in uh, grassy, muddy, dirty areas. But if they were, when I brought them in, I would put them in a little tub with um, maybe an inch or two of water so that their paws, their pads of their paws could get all cleaned out. The other thing about white dogs that I really like, uh, I do use this white on white Chris Christensen shampoo and I will have links to all the items that I reference today below so that you can see white on white shampoo is really great for white dogs. It will get out any of the yellow or reddy colored um, stains. Another question came in about some natural dog chews and what do I recommend, what do I not recommend? So I don't recommend rawhide or anything that could have toxins in it. Uh, one of the dog chews that is a natural dog chew that you can give your dog and have it be entertained by the chew for quite some time is this sweet potato chew. Again, I'll put a link to this below so that you can find it easily. But this is a all natural, the only ingredient is sweet potato. So typically when I'm looking for chews or treats, I want something that is all natural, usually one ingredient. Those are my go-tos. Let's see next. Uh, I've had some questions about potty training. And I want to point out that in my dogs, uh, in my home, we use both potty pads and we give older dogs the opportunity to go outside. So uh, puppies 
will need to relearn the rules, if you will, when they leave my house and come to your house, or if you're getting a dog from another breeder, you need to understand what your breeder did. How did, uh, how did and where did puppies go potty in the breeder's home or in the, in the area? So I'm a big believer that you can start puppy potty training at three weeks. That's right, as a breeder, I think it's our responsibility to make sure that puppies have space apart from their bed that they can crawl to very easily. And mom teaches them, they know instinctively that their potty business goes somewhere else. So you wanna find a breeder who understands this and is actively encouraging puppies to have a potty space. Whatever the puppies are going on, whether it's a potty pad or pellets, some sort of litter, that's what they will start to think of as normal for pottying. So um, again, my adult dogs will often teach my puppies where to go and what's normal here. So I keep a potty pad next to the toilet in my master bathroom and my dogs know to go look for that. Now, if you move to another room with your dogs, let's say I take them out of that space, then I need to make sure that I put the puppy on the potty pad in the room where I want the puppy to go. And I would ask that you do the same thing when you get your new puppy home. Show them where the potty pad is or whatever it is the breeder has had them using when they were with the breeder. This is vital because uh, I'll say to you, my puppies are potty trained in my environment, and that makes it really easy for you to transition it to your own environment by mimicking what I'm doing. If you want to train your potty to go out or your puppy to go out in the grass at your home, I'm happy to provide you with a used potty pad. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully I'll be the only person in your life who ever gives you a used potty pad. But uh, when you get a puppy from me, what we will do is we will talk about the way to set up your home environment so that your dog can transition very easily. I would put the potty pad next to the door that you want the puppy to go out. And as soon as you see the puppy heading towards that potty pad, take them right out. Puppies need to be taken out right after they wake up, right after they eat, right after they have a rough play time. They also need uh, to go out probably every hour or so in the first couple of days until they learn how to cue you. It is totally reasonable that you can set a puppy up to be successful and potty trained within a few days if you are extremely consistent in what you're doing. Make sure everyone in your family knows the routine and also really watch, keep an eye on your puppy. Meaning if you start to see your puppy doing little circles, that's an indication they're about to go. If you see them putting their nose on the floor and sniffing around, indication they need to go, get them outside if you want a dog that's outdoor potty trained. All right, let's see what else do I have here. Make sure that you have a playpen and your puppy goes in that playpen when you are not able to supervise. In that playpen would be a potty pad so that your puppy has a safe place to go that um, you all agree, everybody's in agreement, this is where I'm supposed to go when I can't cue you, meaning the puppy can't cue you, right? So bathroom station area inside your home. I also will use a playpen, um, a portable playpen that is a bathroom station. And I have several videos on this topic that you can find on my channel if you want to visually see what that looks like. Give lots of praise when your dog does go potty. Say yes, yes, good potty. And you, if you do this over and over, this is about a hundred times, a thousand times, you can get to the point where you can cue your dog to go potty. I have dogs that I can point to a particular area and say, go potty, and they will because they've heard the word potty, yes potty, when they have gone potty so many times. But again, that takes time and I don't want you to think that that's going to happen day one when you first bring a dog home. All right, another question about when a puppy is uh, new to you, where does it sleep? 
I'm a big believer in allowing my dogs to sleep in bed with me and my dogs do sleep all together in a pack uh, with me, with Jim. So that works out great for us. If you have a young puppy and you are concerned about the puppy falling off the bed for some reason, just put a bunch of pillows around the outside of your bed. Another option is to take your uh, puppy bed, your puppy crate, uh, your puppy airline carrier, uh, like this. So I, I've shown you uh, these several times again on my channel. If you haven't seen this, this is just a standard airline carrier and I, I'll have a link below for this particular one because I like it so much. It has many different uh, functions in it. But I would take this, put the puppy in it with the zip open door there are two sides here that zip open on this, and you can put this right on your bed with your puppy in it. Now, again, that's if you're getting an eight-week-old puppy. If you're getting a dog that's a little older, that's already trained uh, like that, that's fine. If you say, Sean, I am absolutely not putting my puppy in bed with me, that's okay, too. You can get a puppy playpen, um, a puppy crate, and put it right next to your bed. You will notice if you look at my puppy play pins in some of my videos, you see that I do have crates, wire crates, in my puppy play pins to condition and get my puppies used to being in a crate. So that is possible. I prefer to use a puppy play pin myself and in part that's because I have enough space in my home to do so. All right, so that's what to do at night. Let's see, some more questions here that came in ahead of time. What are some great toys for puppies? And what I would encourage you to do is get very clear on what your breed of dog was bred for. Because what your breed of dog was bred for will determine what type of toys they really love. So schnauzers were bred to Mm, dig out rats and rodents, if you will. So my dogs love toys that enable them to dig something out. Uh, this is one that I will stuff this thing with all kinds of toys. You can just stuff it with them. And then I will hide the toy. I'll put it under something so that they have to go find it. And then they're digging out the toys and the play items. This particular one is, um, a, it comes with a set of these squirrels and it's adorable, but you can see how I use it in multiple ways. So these little uh, type toys are great for my size of dogs. Remember, I have toy schnauzers. If you have a large dog, this is not going to work. Your dog could eat this thing very easily. So you need to think about what size is your dog and what was your dog bred for because that will determine some of the toys that would be best for them. Sporting dogs, for example. If you have a sporting dog, a, a setter of some sort, a hunting type dog, get something that looks like a duck or a rodent, the type of animal that that dog was bred to hunt and put it on the end of a fishing rod. So back when I bred Gordon Setters and English Cocker Spaniels, I would use either a fishing rod or a long stick and we'd take a string and tie the string to the toy. And we'd toss it like it was hopping or playing like a bird would or like an animal would move around in the yard. Uh, dogs that are sporting dogs in particular need a lot of exercise. So toys for them are ones that get them actively moving. Make sure that you think about the best ways to play to your puppy's breeding and strengths. Dogs with a prey drive will need that hunting feeling. And uh, dogs that were bred to be lap dogs like these, these are really lap dogs. They want something to chew on sitting in my lap. Right now, Liberty is sitting in my lap chewing on this little thing and she would love for me to throw it for her and she would bring it right back to me to play with. So uh, chew toys are absolutely a must when your dog is teething. Please make sure you teach your dog 
What are the right play toys for your dog? I do use these uh, cow hooves. And one of you wrote me a note, and I appreciate you writing me, to tell me that cow hooves can splinter and cause problems or can be cracked open. And, and I agree, if you have a very large dog, you probably don't want to use these. When you're looking at this size puppy with this, he's not going to be able to eat that whole thing, and he's not going to be able to splinter it. So for my dogs, this kind of chew toy works really well, and he knows these are his chew toys. He knows, you can see, this is appropriate for him to be chewing on. So I'll say, yes, that's your toy. That's your toy. Yes, Toffee. And I regularly do that when my dogs are chewing on the right thing. If my dogs are chewing on the wrong thing, I tell them so really fast with a big sharp N-O and I say it very dramatically. I'm not doing that now because he's sitting in my lap and I don't want to confuse him, but a nice sharp N-O to let them know that is not something that you are supposed to chew on. All right, I've also uh, been asked this question multiple times. When do you have puppies coming? Who's bred? What's happening? So I have three litters that are coming soon. So Huckleberry was bred to ready, and those puppies are due around Easter Sunday. So April 9th is their official due date. It's 63 days from the date that the uh, puppies are conceived until they are typically born. And that can vary a wee bit. Mother Nature does have uh, that ability to do that. Uh, Huckleberry's ultrasound is scheduled for March 30th. And I do have people on the waiting list for those puppies. They will be black and white phantoms. So in other words, they will look like Grace. They will look like Teddy, if you're looking at my dogs and uh, that black and white phantom, but there will also probably be some black and white party colored like Huckleberry herself. So check out those if you're interested. Um, the next litter that's due is due around April 28th, and that would be Janny and Teddy. Janny is a miniature sized schnauzer, and she is a white creamy color with beautiful green eyes and a brown nose. And bred with Teddy, they have the ability to produce some chocolate color puppies. So we will see, we might be happily surprised with some chocolate colored. Uh, they will definitely have either white puppies with chocolate noses or some chocolate liver uh, colored puppies. And there could even be some party puppies in that mix as well. With Coco, Coco's litter is due May 1st, and I bred her with Reddy, and all of those puppies will be phantoms, black phantoms. So black and silver, black and white, depending on um, how you refer to it. But um, yes, now I also have several females who are due to come in season, and so we would say that like the up next uh, would be Penny, Sweet Tea, Honeybee and Nestle. And so those dogs can all produce recessive red colors. So everything on the scale from the white all the way to the darker red. And depending on which male I breed them to, if I breed them to a dark color male, such as um, Teddy or Truffles, we could also get black or chocolate color from those breedings. So we'll just have to see where that goes. Okay, next I wanted to share with you some thoughts about what it means to be the pack leader for your dog. And I'd like to play along here a little bit. Um, I want you to think about what, what does really great leadership look like? Just for a moment for yourself, when you think of a leader that you admire, what comes to mind? You might write some of this in the comments area. Would love for you to do that. So what does it mean to be a pack leader? Let's tease this out. I'm going to share a couple of things. 
If you've been watching along on my channel for a while, you're going to know the answers to these and I want you to write it in the comments area. So what's the faulty thinking? What's the faulty thinking in pack leadership when someone says, oh, my dog is so naughty. My dog is peeing all over my house. Hmm. I would say to you that that is a problem, a mistake in pack leadership. Write in the comments, what do you think the problem is? What's the faulty thinking related to someone saying or believing, my dog is so naughty, she or he is peeing all over my house. Put the solution in the comments. All right, here's another one. My dog is so naughty or so bad or whatever word you would use. He keeps getting out and going somewhere he's not supposed to be. Maybe it's he keeps going in the other room and I don't want him in there. Or maybe it's he keeps crawling under the fence. He's making me crazy. It's unsafe when he goes on the patio and could jump off the uh, second floor. It's driving me crazy. Why is my dog so naughty or bad? Or again, whatever you, word you might be using to describe that. What's the faulty thinking in pack leadership here if you're saying this? All right, another one. Ah, my dog is so naughty, so bad, so whatever your word is. He keeps eating the stuffing out of toys and swallowing it. Can you believe he's doing this? My dog keeps eating my socks. My dog keeps eating my shoes. Uh, he's not listening to me. What's the faulty thinking in pack leadership there? All right, how about she keeps jumping up and licking my face and I don't like it. My dog keeps jumping up, licking my face, and I really, really, really don't like it. Notice I've got a bunch of dogs sitting here in my lap right now, and none of them are jumping up and licking my face. Why? Why aren't they jumping up and licking my face? What's happening? What's going on with pack leadership? Please write in the comments. I want to respond to the things that you write in the comments here because I want you to start catching it. What does it really mean to be a great pack leader who builds trust and respect with your beloved dogs? Let's see, oh, I got one of these. I'm still laughing about this. I've had more than one person say to me, Sean, I had my dogs watch your potty training videos but they're not potty trained yet. Hmm. Okay, there's a challenge there. It's a pack leadership challenge. What's the faulty thinking? Whose responsibility is setting up the right environment for potty training? All right, final one here. My dog nips and bites me all the time. My hands are all scratched up and I don't like it. I don't like that my dog keeps nipping at me. Again, I've got puppies sitting right here in my lap and nobody's nipping at my hands. Why? What's going on? What's the difference? I love, love, love your comments. So being the pack leader means you are setting your puppy up for success. If you find yourself being frustrated by something that your dog is doing, I would ask you to look in the mirror, and I wanna say this as gently and as nicely and as kindly as I can. Building trust and respect with your dog is all about how you set them up to be successful. So how are you interacting with your dog? Let's go back and think about this. If, if somebody's saying, hey, my dog is naughty, she pees all over the house, I'm going to say back, oh, she's been given way too much space. She needs to be in a playpen until she learns exactly where you want her to go. If you're saying my dog keeps getting out, going in a room or a space he's not supposed to or under a fence, who is responsible for that? Like, we've got to make sure we have an appropriate playpen area for our dogs that they can't get into spaces that have toxic chemicals or that go under the, the gate and can get out into the neighborhood and be uh, running around all over the place. That's on us. Be the pack leader. Don't set your dog up for failure. Set them up for success. 
If a dog keeps eating stuffing out of toys, they only get those kind of toys when they're supervised, and maybe even they don't get those kinds of toys at all. There are several manufacturers of toys, like Kong, for example, that make indestructible uh, toys that make crunchy noises and that do have some soft uh, sort of roping in it. Let's see if I can grab one really fast. Well, I don't think I can at the moment, but um, those toys are really great for dogs like this. Stop giving your dogs toys that have the kind of stuffing that they can um, get out and eat if that's an issue for you. Let's see. I, again, I'm still laughing at that. I made your dog, I made my dog watch your videos and he hasn't gotten it yet. Okay, here's a fact. My dogs love to watch my YouTube videos. In fact, we often have the YouTube videos on for them if we're not entertaining them or doing something with them, the YouTube videos are often playing for them to watch and they love it. And people tell me regularly that when they took their own dog home and they turned on my YouTube videos, it would immediately quiet and calm their dog so that when they go out, when they go do something, um, they turn on these videos and their puppy is quiet, happy, listening, watching. But that doesn't mean that they're learning from the videos. Meaning, I don't think you can say to your puppy, I want you to watch Sean talk about housebreaking and I want you to get it just by watching it. No, that's more of an actual experience the dog has to have in the moment with you. Just like the whole um, series that we're doing on training a dog from eight weeks to 16 weeks, that's us training you so by you watching the videos and then you consistently doing those things with your dog, that's what's going to train your dog. Okay, and again, this one's so common and I, I don't want um, you to be hurt by what I'm saying here, but if your dog is jumping up and licking you on the face and you don't want that, it's happening because you're allowing it, meaning Put your dog in your lap, put your hand down on your dog, and get your dog used to being calm around you. So again, more than once I've had people say to me, why is my dog jumping all around and licking and jumping all over me? Well, it's because you're allowing it. I want you to teach your puppy to sit right next to you, just like this little guy is. I want you to get your puppy used to being combed. I'm sitting here combing him, but you can't see that being combed right next to you so he's calm and relaxed in your arms. This is you training your puppy to be the way you want him or her to be. That's good pack leadership. And that's what you need to do. So it's completely okay with me. If you say, hey, I don't want my dog kissing me or licking me or jumping on me, then don't allow it. Okay, I probably beat that point up about pack leadership. But uh, I am just such a huge believer that we have to be responsible for our dogs. And when we are, we create these beloved family pets. When we're not, we create dogs that are very anxious and uncomfortable and they feel like they have to protect us. Then they start being too barky. By the way, I have, I think it's nine dogs here in my house, eight dogs here in my house. They're quiet right now. Nobody's barking. Uh, there are things going on outside, there are birds at the windows, all that kind of stuff. But my dogs don't normally just sit and bark to bark. They've been taught to be quiet and they know the command quiet. I have several videos on that if that's one of those that uh, you are asking about. Okay, now I'm going to go look at the chat and see what questions or comments are here that we need to respond to. And. My husband, Jim, is sitting here right next to me, so he can also help me or guide me if um, there's something that I'm missing. Let's see. You don't really have any questions. Jim is telling me we don't really have any questions at the moment. But Jake Walker responded to your, your questions. Ah, well, Jake, thank you so much for responding to my questions. I. I really appreciate that. And it looks like Maria's here too. Maria came by with Oliver earlier today and we had a nice little visit. You'll see Oliver in a video that we posted earlier this morning with his mama Maria. Well, I love the opportunity to answer your questions and I would encourage you to put any questions or comments that you have below this video. 
and I would be happy to continue the discussion with you either individually or in a live session in the future. If there are no other comments, then we will say please subscribe if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.